Hi guys, I'm Eileen. Today, I want to share with you the 9 things we should never buy or waste money on. If you're new here, this channel is all about luxury minimalism and the responsible ways to enjoy designer shopping. As beautiful as luxury pieces are, I think having too much of anything can start to feel like a burden. So even if you can afford it, it doesn't mean you have to buy everything on your luxury wish list. For many of us, money is a finite resource, so it's really important to prioritize and identify what you should and shouldn't spend money on. And today, I want to share with you the 9 things I don't think are worth our money and hopefully this video will help you to become a more conscious consumer. First of all, don't waste any money to keep up with the Joneses or impress other people. For example, if everyone at your workplace is carrying a designer bag, you might feel like you are out of place because you are the odd one out. I understand peer pressure is a very real thing, especially when you're younger and you're confused with who you want to be as a person. So you might have the tendency to want to blend in and be accepted. The thing is though, if a person needs you to dress in a certain way or drive a certain car to treat you right, this person really doesn't deserve your time, effort or attention. Similarly, if someone truly values you for who you are, they will not care about what you put on yourself. It took me years to realize this, but we are really not defined by what we own, use or carry. You could be a very charitable or accomplished person without having to carry a Louis Vuitton bag to prove it. You can of course have one if you really like it and you've worked hard for it. But don't feel less of yourself on the days when you don't have it with you. I'm in my 30s and I feel like I now pay a lot less attention to how other people might see me compared to when I was in my 20s. So I think this certainly has something to do with age. The point is though, other people's opinions don't pay for our bills, rent or groceries. So they really shouldn't get a say in how we spend our money or what we buy. Number two, don't waste money on guilty purchases. Have you ever spent a long time in a store and try on absolutely everything but nothing makes your heart sing? But then you realize the sale associate has been entertaining you for the last two hours. You then feel a bit guilty and even under pressure to buy at least something because otherwise you've wasted the sale associate's time. To be honest, I still feel the guilt sometimes, but I think we owe it to ourselves to only buy the perfect pieces. Don't get me wrong, we should absolutely respect the sale associates' time and effort, especially because some of them work on a commission basis. But I don't think we should feel obligated to spend just because of the good service. I'll give you an example. You know at Hermes, a lot of their pieces like their shoes and fine jewelry are not readily available. So if I'm interested in something, my sale associate will have to do quite a bit of arrangement to get the item in. So sometimes I feel like I have to buy the item because in a way, it is there because of me. But at the end of the day, I don't want to spend my hard earned money on something that I don't really love. So my advice is, do plenty of research, treat the essay like how you like to be treated, and don't be afraid to be honest with yourself and walk away from guilty purchases. Moving on to number three, we absolutely shouldn't pay for credit card interests. Here's the thing, luxury items are already expensive, so you really don't want to pay more than the price tax. I'm sure many of you know, Credit card interests are as high as 18 to 20%. And I honestly can't think of any luxury items that are worth this kind of interest. If you have to pay for something on credit, just take a step back and acknowledge this is not the best time to buy the item just yet. You're not depriving yourself. You're only looking after your financial security. Number four, don't waste money on ill-fitting shoes or clothes. During sales seasons, our sizes might sell out very quickly. So you might feel tempted to buy shoes which are half a size bigger because you can easily fix the problem with a pair of insoles. I'm not sure if you've experienced this, but sometimes when you like something so much, it can start to cloud your judgment and you start making irrational decisions. For example, in the past, I used to buy clothes 
that were not really the right fit for me because I thought one day I would go to the tailor and everything would work out. Sadly, that one day never came and things started piling up in my closet. So when I buy anything now, I choose not to compromise. It might sound demanding, but I only want to buy the pieces that look like they've been made for me. I don't want to spend any more money on either tailoring, a pair of insoles or a shoulder straps for a bag that sits too low on me. In short, only the perfect pieces should go home with you because everything else might just be a waste of money. Number five, we also shouldn't pay for maintenance for the pieces we no longer use. This comes in the form of storage, insurance, dry cleaning, specialist products like sprays and brushes, and even our time and attention. I'm quite a practical person and I feel quite strongly about selling the pieces I no longer use because for me, things are supposed to surface. So if we don't reach for them anymore, we are basically losing money just to keep them in our collection. I highly recommend everyone to read the book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo. It's an all-time bestseller and I've read it at least three times. If you think you have a hoarding problem, this book will change your life. Next, we also shouldn't waste money on buying anything just because of the fear of missing out. This includes buying a Chanel handbag you're not too sure about just because it's the last one in the country or purchasing a Birkin bag in the color you're not crazy about because you're worried you might never get another bag offer. Similarly, when something is labeled special edition or limited edition, it can give us the feeling of scarcity and therefore a sense of urgency to add the item to our basket. These are just a few examples of us refusing to miss out rather than us really liking the items. It's really important to let go of the fear of missing out because when the heat of the moment passes, you're basically left with an expensive item that you don't really enjoy using. Something else we should never waste money on are impractical items. I'm generally quite a practical person, so even with my kitchen utensils or electronic gadgets, I always think about practicality. This actually works quite well for me because I no longer buy any random knickknacks. As for luxury fashion items, I pretty much shop with the same mentality. I want these pieces to serve a purpose and I want to make good use of them. And just on top of my head, I can think of so many impractical items that I will never buy. For example, beautiful shoes that are impossible to walk in, lipstick cases or super tiny handbags that can hardly fit anything. While we're talking about super tiny handbags, the Jack Mills Lee Chiquito bags were really popular at one point, but it looks like Chanel has also joined the trend. I've seen several tiny handbags from Chanel, but lately the Chanel Mini Vanity Case has become a huge hit. This bag costs about £1,400 and apparently it can fit a few credit cards and probably two lipsticks, but certainly not a phone. For me anyway, it kind of defeats the purpose of having a bag, so in my opinion, it's not worth paying for. Now some people might argue, super tiny bags are not supposed to be handbags, they are really accessories. But for me, I'd much rather spend on actual accessories like sunglasses and jewelry, and I want my bags to do the things they're supposed to do, which is carrying my things. The next items I don't think are worth paying for are pieces that are clearly overpriced. I feel like nowadays, a lot of luxury brands use their logo as a way to justify the huge markup for a lot of their pieces. So for example, designer t-shirts, uh, hair clips, socks, and even stationary items. I think a lot of us will agree that just by removing the logo from these products, they will not be worth nearly as much Obviously, a logo is a brand's heritage, but it really shouldn't be overused and I personally don't think it's worth it to pay substantially more just so I could display the logo on myself. Now, I'm sure some of us are used to paying more for luxury items, but I don't think all luxury pieces are created the same and it's so important to differentiate paying for quality from paying for the logo. 
There you have it. Those are the things I don't think are worth paying for, regardless of how timeless, classic or beautiful they might be. For me, luxury minimalism has made it so much easier for me. I no longer feel tempted to buy a lot of the things I would have bought previously. And this is me without having to convince myself to do so. Not only have I saved a lot of money, I also feel like a smaller collection is so much easier to look after and maintain. Most importantly, as I cut down on consumerism, I'm able to enjoy luxury shopping without worshipping logo or anything designer related. I've said this before and I'll say it again, but being selective is empowering, not depriving. So that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to share, like and subscribe. I will see you in my next one. Have a nice day.